Let's look at how to use the photo tool to capture evidence of learning in your classroom. Um, with the option in the upper right hand corner, the plus option, this is the easiest way to get into the menu to add to your portfolio. The photo tool in the upper left, um, one of the greatest descriptions I had from a teacher about why you use the photo tool was to capture all those things that are ephemeral, all those things that typically don't last very long. Uh, it could be an observation in the lab, a phenomenon. Uh, it could be something they observe on a nature walk. It could be something that would wind up crumpled in their backpack. Uh, it could be a poster that they created. It could be a drawing, uh, something that they whiteboarded, something that they built. Those things that really typically don't last very long, we can capture and store in our learning portfolio. And given the flexibility of Seesaw, it's more than just taking a photo. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But let's look at just the basic photo option. So you would choose the photo icon. Now it may ask you for permission to use the camera and you would want to allow that. So then if I pick up my iPad, um, I can switch it around if I want to take a photo of myself, a selfie in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice there's a swap option with the camera. But I'm going to go ahead and take a photo of this specimen. So I'll click one of the camera icons to capture it. Now there are some tools down at the bottom. We'll talk about those in just a moment. But if I'm just trying to capture this image, I'll go ahead and check and say, yep, that's pretty good. Um, as I am a teacher, I would get a list of my students if I wanted to give that photo to a particular student. The student would not see that list. And then I'll check it, and there it is in my portfolio. Now, if it was uh, submitted by a student, they would see a red banner up the top that said, waiting for approval. And you as the teacher would get a notification that Johnny wanted to add something to his portfolio and you would look and see if you approve it and then it would become part of the official portfolio. Now that's just a photo. So if I wanted to capture something for them to add to their portfolio. There's a lot more to this photo tool though. So to go back to that option, I'm going to choose the triple dot and choose edit item. So I'm going to go back to what we saw a little bit earlier, which were the options down at the bottom. So these are some options to edit and interact with this photo. The left option allows me, if I took the photo with the camera upside down, I could rotate it and flip that around. I have a microphone tool, which we'll look at in just a moment, which lets me talk about the photo. There is a drawing tool. If I click on that pencil, it opens up a, a spectrum of colors that I can choose from. So I'll choose blue and I can start to you know, draw and interact with this item. Um, I can change the color very quickly. I can change the pen width very quickly as well. Um, go to a nice thick pen width and shade in some areas, um, and then if I don't like what I did, I can erase it pretty quickly, either using the little eraser icon or erase all. Okay, then I also will see this T button. The T button allows me to add a text box. So if I want to go ahead and say this is Beaker the Muppet, okay, it gave me a label. Now, since I was clicked into the green color with the drawing, it made it a green font. Let's say I don't like that. I could go to Style and click on one of their already preset styles to change that. Let's say I like that. Another option is go to Custom, which lets me totally uh, play around with the background and you know, no background, some background, so I could turn off the background if I wanted to. I think I might keep that background for now. Uh, change the font, change the color, and then also I can adjust the size and I can rotate it if I want to. Okay, so then another powerful tool is the record button. And something that I think makes the record button very powerful is I can interact with the image while I'm talking about it. So to show you, um, I could hit this record button and it'll give me a little countdown and I could say hi this is the specimen that I've recently collected in the lab his name is Beaker the Muppet and I can point out some important body features he has frizzy orange hair and I'm going to change my pen width here um, he has a bright orange nose he has a very surprised facial expression and uh, he is wearing a green lab coat 
So what I just did was create a video where I am interacting with my picture. And when I am happy with it, and let's say students are like, okay, that's only part of my video, they can continue. So I pause the recording. Let's say I want to talk about it some more. I would hit the record button. Oh, another thing I wanted to tell you was that he has red and white striped socks. Okay, so obviously that's not a very uh, learning substantive video, but I wanted to show you how that worked. So then I could click the check mark and turn it in, and it would turn it as an, in as a video. Again, the students can interact with their image by adding labels, submitting it with labels, by adding annotations using the pen tool and submitting it with that, or by creating a video where they're actually talking about the image. Um, a, a teacher shared with me this is how she does book talks. When students read through an area of text, they will take a photo of a particular paragraph or a particular section of text and analyze it, talk about the tone, talk about how it uh, helps them understand the features of that particular character. 